Hey, greetings there, everyone. It's GleeCon coming back at you again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. On our last episode, we looked at Hygel Summit, aka the Mount Hygel region, from the Dungeons and Dragons World of Warcraft perspective. Um, so I think there's some bones of what may stay there and, and some things may change, but we're not going to actually get into it too much for quite a while because that, that is not an explorable region until Cataclysm. We've also been looking at Cycle of Hatred and some other things. This will be the last Chronicles that we do before we actually play World of Warcraft. So stay a while and listen to the Molten Core. Um, the reason why I'm including it now is because Blackrock Spire was like initial Blackrock Spire slash Stratholm. Those were like the initial uh, end game kind of content. And I would, I would put Blackrock Spire firmly in as the end game. And I believe that Molten Core was the kind of pinnacle of that. So why you would work your way through the Dark Iron situation and eventually fight up to the Molten Core um, is initial endgame for the first few months. So let's find out what this is all about. To honor her husband's memory, Moira Thalrissen put aside her anger at his death. The strike on Shadowforge City had left her clan in absolute chaos. And for the moment, that was an advantage. Ragnaros's lieutenants were deeply suspicious of how loyal the wife of Dagrin Thalrissen would be to the Fire Lord, but they were too busy trying to reestablish control over the Dark Irons to keep a close eye on her. There goes that camera. If you remember from my previous episodes, it's in Glitch. Uh, it's, we got a new one on the way. She used the opportunity well. Moira quietly let out word that the Dark Iron Dwarves were being forced to create a massive army for the Fire Lord. Dagrin Thalrissen's death had delayed the creation of that army, but not for long. Ragnaros and his forces would only become stronger as time went on. To draw as much attention as possible, Moira made sure the rest of the world knew that there were riches and artifacts of untold power hidden deep within the mountain. She hoped that some adventurous or greedy heroes would band together to shatter Ragnaros' defenses and banish the Fire Lord back to the elemental plane. And that was him. Ragnaros was essentially first endgame boss. <clears throat> Her plan worked better than she could have ever dreamed. Before the Alliance or the Horde acted on the rumors, another force did, the Hydraxian Water Lords, elemental beings of water who were natural enemies of the fire elementals. They offered aids and rewards to anyone who would challenge Ragnaros. Before long, the Water Lords had recruited scores of powerful champions to invade Ragnaros' domain in the heart of the mountain, the Molten Core. They carefully moved through the fiery stronghold, engaging and killing the greatest of the fire elementals. They're also famous for being one of the most annoying factions to try to get to Exalted because you can just simply grind out these old classic um, molten core raids and stuff for their rep, and that's it. And, but you do get a cool water elemental mount if you can, you, you can buy that if you max them out. <clears throat> Okay, um, sorry, I'm going to reread the sentence. As the Molten Core's defenders fell, the champions used the gifts of the Water Lords to destroy Ragnaros' protective runes, leaving no barrier between them and the Fire Lord. Um, Ragnaros' strength was legendary, but it was not enough to slaughter the invaders. In defeat, he was banished back to the Elemental Plane. The Dark Iron Dwarves were finally free. Any among them who had doubted Moira's intentions begged her for forgiveness, as the widow of Emperor Dagrin Thalrissen, she'd always had the right to rule them. As their liberator, she now had their loyalty. But her victory did not mean that times would be easy for the Dark Irons, nor did it mean that Moira Thalrissen had given up on her husband's dream of conquest. Um, and I think there's a reason why, if for the for, you know, for quite a while, you can continue to fight the Dark Irons, and it's not until BFA times when you can unlock them as a race and they're sort of uh, finally uh, accepting them into the Alliance fold there. But that gets us up to through the first patch's content. Um, second patch, it opens up the next thing in Chronicles, which is where the Mysteries of Maradon is what that patch is called. But we can begin playing a huge chunk of the game um, for the time being. All right, everybody, 
I thank you so much for watching and listening to another episode of more of Warcraft. I apologize in advance for this and probably the next 10 to 15 episodes worth of bad video on my bottom face in the corner there because of my camera pooping the bed. Um, it's only about a year old, so I can't recommend this Razer Keo camera. Um, and I've read other people, it lasted even longer, so I guess I should be happy that I got a year out of it, but we will see. This one, in the pipe, five by five.